My name is Jessica Zhang. Welcome to Global Air Learning. We're here to share and learn interesting stuff every lesson and make friends of other kids. If you want to be the speaker or participate in any teamwork of this program, please register as a member on our website. The link of the website is on the slide. You can also scan the QR code on the slide to go to the restoration. Before we get started, in two weeks, we will be having a special talk called Public Speaking Skills for Life by Joshua Schoolman, who is a Shark Tank coach and also an award-winning speaker coach. So make sure to check it out on our website, but you can also scan the QR code on the slide too. Today's presentation is going to be about natural disasters. We're really happy to have presenter Rishing, Rishing to present to us. We're going to have our newer participants introduce themselves. Please do not forget to turn on your camera and write your first name on the screen. Now I am going to I'm going to introduce myself. My name is Jessica. I am 14 years old. I live in California. Some of my hobbies are baton twirling, piano, ballet, and playing golf. Today I am the host for this session. So nice to meet everyone. And now I will have teacher Tanya introduce herself. Thank you, Jessica, our host. My name is Teacher Tanya, and I have been teaching for over 29 years, but I actually learn something every single day. I learn from you. I learn from the world around me. I love to read. I love to write. I'm an artist, and I love to travel and meet new friends. I see um, okay, I, hi, I'm Olivia. I'm 10 years old and I live in Los Angeles. Sometimes, some things I like to do for fun are reading, coding, math, debate, and ballet, and I'll be your admin today. Hello, my name is Annie and I am 9 years old. I live in Seattle, Washington. Some of my hobbies are going outside, playing piano, and playing Chinese checkers. I will be your coordinator tonight. Hello, my name is Austin, and I am an angel today. I live in Vancouver, and some of my hobbies are skating, skiing, and a lot of other exercises. Today, I'll be your co coordinator. Hello, everyone. My name is Mignana Cole, and I am seven years old. Some of the things I like to do include ice skating, making art, and and writing and reading. I'll, and I'll be your coordinator today. Wonderful, Felix. Hello, everyone. I'm nine, no, ten years old. I like soccer, chess, and piano. And today I'll be your coordinator. Hi, my name's Angelina. I'm seven years old. I like to draw, ride my bike, scooter, and what I love to do a lot is read. Right. So now we will have our presenter introduce herself. Hi everyone, my name is Rayshawn and I'm 11 years old. I live in Culver City. Some of the things I like to do include playing basketball, drawing, coding, and math. Now we can get into our presentation. The reason why I chose this topic is to raise awareness of natural disasters. Natural disasters. Introduction. There are many varieties of natural disasters and they all have a great impact on the area that they hit. Today, we will be learning about the most common types of natural disasters. Now, I'm going to talk about some common natural disasters, which include tornadoes, earthquakes, wildfires, 
and hurricanes. Tornadoes. What are tornadoes? Tornadoes are vertical tubes of rotating air. They can spin at speeds up to 250 miles an hour. That's as fast as a peregrine falcon, which is the fastest animal in the world. Tornado Alley is an area located in Texas, Louisiana, Oklahoma, Kansas, South Dakota, Iowa, and Nebraska. And I learned about that. Maybe uh, I, I just guess that I watched a video that cold air comes down and warm air comes up. Ooh, thank you for sharing that. Zemo? Uh, is Tornado Alley a place where tornadoes often occur? Yes, it is. How are tornadoes formed? Tornadoes form in thunderstorms when warm, humid air comes in contact with cold, dry air. The warm air rises above the cold air, which makes an updraft and the updraft will begin to rotate if there is a sudden change in the speed or direction. As you can see in the diagram, the warm wind is rising above the cold air, which creates an updraft, and then it rotates, which is shown above. Earthquakes. How are earthquakes formed? Earthquakes are formed because of the shifting of the Earth's crust, which is broken into tectonic plates. When the tectonic plates divide, collide into each other, or slide against each other, earthquakes occur. Wait. When two tectonic plates divide and new crust forms in between, it is called divergent boundaries. When, new tectonic, when two tectonic plates collide, some crust is destroyed. This is called convergent boundaries. Finally, when two tectonic plates slide against each other, it is called transform boundaries. Um, uh, I, I guess that uh, earthquakes, sometimes uh, um, when earthquakes happen, uh, uh, like there could be cracks on the floor sometimes. How are earthquakes measured? Earthquakes are measured on the Richter scale from 1 to 10. An earthquake that measures a 1 would be barely detectable while an earthquake that measures at 10 would destroy cities. The worst earthquake. The worst earthquake ever, named the Valdivia earthquake, took place at Valdivia, Chile, on May 22, 1960. It is measured at 9.4 to 9.6 on the Richter scale. Wildfires. Wildfires can be caused by heat, or humans. If there's hot weather, then it could heat up flammable items and start a fire. Humans could cause forest fires by leaving flammable objects in the forest, improperly discarding a cigarette or arson. Firefighters extinguish wildfires. There are many ways to extinguish wildfires. To start, firefighters could dig around the fire robbing it of its fuel, so it will stop eventually. Another way that firefighters put out wildfires is with fire retardant. They drop it from airplanes onto the fire in the rest of the forest. I was, I was saying that um, sometimes firefighters burn, uh, burn, uh, burn, trees, uh, burn trees in a small area. Yes, it's true. Thank you. Some airplanes can carry up to... 9,600 gallons of fire returning. Hurricanes. How are hurricanes formed? Hurricanes are formed near the tropics when warm, humid air above the water rises and comes in contact with cooler air. Then, the cooler air warms up and starts to rise, causing large storm clouds to form. The worst hurricanes. Number one, the Great Hurricane of 1780. The Great Hurricane of, 7080, of 1780 is the deadliest in history. The winds blew at 200 miles per hour and there were approximately 22,000 deaths. Number two, Hurricane Mitch, which occurred in 1998. 
This hurricane is the second deadliest, with damages of $5 billion in, and 11,000 fatalities. Number three, the Galveston Hurricane of 1900. The Galveston Hurricane of 1900 is the third deadliest earthquake ever. It destroyed roughly 3,600 homes, with damage totaling $30 million. Wow, Venus. What's the difference between a tornado and a hurricane? You'll find out shortly in another slide. Yes, but good question, Venus. Michael, did you have a question? Um, I was about to ask the same thing. Ooh, you were thinking the same thing. Excellent. Tornadoes versus hurricanes. Oh, here you go. Similarities. The first similarity is that they both have powerful rotating winds. And the second similarity is that they are both very deadly. Differences. The first difference is that hurricanes are hundreds of miles in diameter, but tornadoes are only a few hundred feet wide. The second difference is that hurricanes can last for many days or weeks, but tornadoes only last for a few minutes. Now, we will go back to our host, Jessica. Oh, and Michael, I see your hand up. Um, my question is, the hurricane is always is also when uh, warm air rises from the water and meets the cold air. And the tornado is the same thing. Uh, why are they still different? They are, uh, they are made the same way. They are created the same way. That's true. Thank you for pointing that out. Um, now we will go back to our host, Jessica. Well, according to smart, stormsmart.com, hurricanes are formed over warm water and tropical oceans, while tornadoes are formed over land. So although they're mainly the same, they do form in different places, which do cause them to be different. Wonderful. Thank you. Now we'll go to our host, Jessica. Thank you for your presentation, Risen. Thank you for your sharing your presentation on natural disasters. Now, Austin will do the vocabulary words. Now it's time for the vocabulary words. The first word is updraft. An upward current or movement of gas such as air. Does anyone have a sentence for updraft? Let's see, Miana. Are tornadoes um, updraft? Now, is that a question you want to ask Rashawn or a sentence you made? A question. Okay, Rashawn, do you know the answer to that? Because I don't even know. Tornadoes aren't just updrafts, but they also rotate as well. So that if there's a sudden change in the speed or direction, then the updraft will begin to rotate. So then the updraft will form into a tornado. Wonderful, Miana, for that sentence and question. Oh, it is humid. When the air contains lots of moisture. So that is humid. And Rebecca had a sentence that rain has updraft. Thank you, Rebecca. Who would like to make a sentence with humid? Steve. Oh, when it's early in the morning, it's humid, maybe? Absolutely. And when I went to the rainforest, it was very humid. That's a true sentence. When it's humid, there's lots of water. Ooh, absolutely. I can tell you have a scientific mind. Thank you. And Rebecca also wrote, the rainforest is super humid. Yes, Felix? This is actually a very fun fact, which is that actually summer is more humid than winter. Actually, winter is really dry, and summer is very humid. That's a good Thank you. The third word is rotate. Spinning in a circle around an axis or center. Ooh, so that is 
rotate and the picture's showing it too. Yes, Steve? I like to rotate a lot. Oh, yes, that's your body moving. The fourth word is tectonic plates. Pieces of Earth's crust that move around which cause earthquakes. Tectonic plates are part of the of the earth which is called the crust and it's the thinnest layer between i think the five layers of the earth my question was uh, where are the types the tectonic plates in the earth's crust i think the tech i think the tectonic plates are basically these plates that um I use tectonic plates that um, form together to make the earth, so it's kind of like puzzle pieces. What? When tectonic plates slide, it causes earthquakes. Exactly, that's a good example. Thank you, Angelina. When two tectonic plates crash together like really hard, we can sometimes make entire mountains. Good question, Paul. Austin X. Sometimes the tectonic plates in the oceans, when they crash, they can form ocean mountains or trenches. Alfred Wegener actually discovered the tecton tec tec tectonic plates. Ooh, very cool. Amy. Where does Richter scale? A scale from 1 to 10 measuring the strength of earthquakes invented by Charles Francis Richter. How does the Richter scale even work? So, in the bottom there, like the turquoise one, would be 1.0, which would mean that it's barely undetectable. It's not very strong. You can't destroy anything. But then 10.0 would be an extreme disaster, which means that it would break buildings, cause cracks in the ground, and really cause a lot of... What about in the middle? And in the middle, um, it would still be pretty strong, like 8.0 or 5.0, like orange to red would be really pretty strong, and then 4 to... One would be um, not as strong, but still like a natural disaster. Um, I have a question. So my question is, how do people predict earthquakes? Like, can they predict earthquakes? Because how do you know when a tectonic plates are going to crash together, slide apart, or um, move? Because... You can't see the tectonic plates unless you break open the floor of your house and then, like, yeah. Ooh, let's see what Rashan has to say about that. This is really true, but, like, now humans have, like, a ton of, like, technology and they like, put stuff on the ground or, like, we have other methods, like, maybe the air temperature is getting weird or something or, like, the animals are getting crazier. So, like, there's always, like, some sort of, like... Because there's not, like, something just going to come out from nowhere. There's always, like, signals. There's, like, something's about to happen. And, like, now there's technology. We can, like, put it over some ground, and it's probably going to detect if there's an earthquake or not. So it's probably sometimes they don't use computers. When they feel the ground shaking, it means that the earthquake is coming, too. Dogs can, like, just feel if something bad's going to happen, like if earthquakes are going to happen, hurricanes, tornadoes, or other disasters. The sixth word is collide. Get something forcefully when moving. Lots of things could collide with each other. It's true. Paul. The titan titanic plates collide, when, and when they collide, it makes an earthquake. Yes, you got it. Oh. The seventh word is flimble. 
Items that can easily catch on fire are flammable. Uh, the smoking tubes are flammable. If they can predict earthquakes, that can pre they can predict earthquakes. But how do they know where it's on on the richer scale? They they can't actually know till after it happens. Flammable thing is something that is able to catch fire. Exactly. So if uh, we have a flammable thing, we have to keep it away from fire and those stuff? Absolutely. Good advice. What does that picture mean? Oh, that just shows danger. You want to be careful with things. The danger are, liquids? Yeah, that are flammable. Eighth word is arson. An illegal act of intentionally starting a fire. What is the picture about? Uh, just people. What are oh, these people? Watching a fire start, which is very tragic. Um, the picture means that um, those people that are watching got away in time because they were arsonists, the people who started the fire. And you never want to play with fire. Okay, let's see what our next word is. Next word is extinguish. To put out something such as a fire. When there's a big fire, when there's fire, um, a firefighters extinguish the fire. A fire extinguisher is something that can stop the fire. The tenth word is fatally. An accidental death from a war, disease, natural disaster, etc. Guns can fatality people. The second most deadliest um, torn, um, earthquake made lots of fatalities. Fatalities, yes. Fatality. A fire, a natural, a wildfire can, can could cause fatality. We have our two questions. That is going to be that the presenter wrote for us. Two questions. What do you think? First question. Which one of the natural disasters, tornado, earthquake, wildfire, wildfire, or hurricanes do you think is the most powerful? Florence, what do you think? Um, I think... I think a uh, tornado is the most powerful um, weather because once in Kansas I saw a tornado. I think a wildfire is stronger because uh, sometimes if people didn't see it, it can spread for, from the whole forest and maybe burn houses and people. I think I think uh, hurricanes are the most powerful. Because um, because hurricanes cause lots of fatality and 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 um, deaths. I also agree with Nona. I think hurricanes are the most deadliest because tornadoes are weaker than a hurricane. The wildfires. I think someone even said the wildfires are sort of good. Earthquakes are pretty deadly because are uh, pretty deadly, but they're not as deadly as hurricanes. Hurricanes can cause a lot of damage, and sometimes they can even slip by undetected. And hurricanes, uh, and a lot of people, if you search hurricane, if you search what the most deadliest uh, disaster, uh, natural disaster is, most people will say it's hurricane. Yeah. Hurricanes are the most powerful because it lasts more, it lasts longer than a tornado. Ooh. Our next question is our second question, which is, what can you do to prevent these natural disasters? The way to prevent a wildfire is not to uh, do barbecue in the forest or not to do fireworks or put or do any fires in the forest. Don't prevent a wildfire. So friends, I'm going to sign off now because I'm going to turn it back to the friends who are going to lead us in Kahoot. So have a wonderful time playing the game. We'll turn it, we'll go back to Jessica, your host, and I'll see you next week. Good luck on Kahoot. I know you've been doing great listening.
Now it's game time, and we are gonna play Kahoot. So thank you guys for coming to Global Air Learning. Thank you, Teacher Tanya, and thank you for our presenter, Risan, for his for her presentation about natural disasters. Thank you, everyone, for coming. For next week's Global Air Learning, Kevin will be presenting your growing guts. Again, if you want to be a presenter or to volunteer, please email us. You can find our contact information at icea1.org, or you can scan the QR code on the screen. Just a reminder, we'll be having a special talk about public speaking for life by Russia, by Russia Solman, who is an award-winning speaker and coach, and also a Shark Tank coach as well on June 4th, 2021. So make sure to check it out, I'll just check it out. And we are looking forward to see you guys soon again. Bye. Oh, yeah. Bye.